Welcome to Fandom Power. What? Whoa! Hey! Good evening. That ended rather abruptly. It did. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm still kind of doing stuff here. What's going on? <laughs> All right. Hey, look at that. We've we're like back. we're uh like 30 seconds in. <laughs> We've already got a viewer. That's great. All right. Welcome to uh Sunday night, everybody. It's another episode of uh, Fandom Power. Myself, uh, my name is Wes, and uh once again here with Andy. Uh hey, and Andy running uh running the show tonight again at the at the con i guess as it as it were maybe <laughs> so yeah uh this week we're just kind of a mash together episode lots of uh yeah, this is kind of a lots of stuff bit of a chill chill hangout really yeah i'm kind of hoping the hey oh steve he says hey guys hope all is well and i have to tell you Yes, all is well by the skin of my teeth in the last, uh, in the 11th hour, messing around with cameras and uh, other settings <laughs> and avoiding a catastrophe. Once again, here we are. Glad to have you along with us, Steve. And of course, for the rest of you out there who were watching, it's a totally interactive show tonight. Uh, looking forward to hearing your comments and your thoughts on the, on the number of things we're going to talk about tonight. And like I said, this is a general kind of hangout tonight. Yeah, we got a lot on the board here tonight. Um, some of it good, some of it a bit sad, but sometimes, you know, it's, it's good to not have just a, a solid, uh, you know, this is what we're doing. And it's, it's a, you sit back and, and you watch and let us ramble on. Although, you know what, we're totally fine to do that as well. It's nice to be able to have something that's a little bit more relaxed. That's a little bit more open where, you know, um, you guys can uh, jump in. Uh, at any time and of course if you guys have questions or comments even outside of the stuff that we're talking about always uh throw those up in the comments and we'll we'll get to those as well so uh what do you think you want to kick this thing off i think so all right what are we going to talk about first uh well i have an unconfirmed rumor but i think i heard it an unconfirmed rumor uh, did you also hear that christopher lloyd joined the cast of mando season three? Oh, so you know what's funny um i i did hear that and you know what i intentionally said i am not going to look into that because i don't want to be disappointed yeah because like i don't know what uh, part he could play but i love him in any part that he's going to play you know so here's so droid mm, like maybe old old like old 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 droid oh, maybe a, a old jedi yeah maybe um um oh, old jedi that's not a bad idea either oh <sighs> I don't think that's the way that Mandalorian is going to go in season three, though. No. I think I think we're going to Mandalore, or we're going to be on the way to Mandalore. So he's going to ride the Mythosaur. Well, yeah, somebody's going to ride a Mythosaur. I don't know who it is yet, whether it's, it's going to uh, be him. Mando or Boba, but someone's going to ride one. Uh, sticking to the the trope, I guess, where comedians have have um, have been voicing the the droids in in this uh, series. True. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he plays, um, you know, that, or maybe he could be like in the, in the vein of grief Karga. He could be a, a, a client local, or something, a client or perhaps a, a minor political figure on another True. world or something. True. I, I, you know, no matter what he does, I mean, Christopher Lloyd, um, is more than just back to the future and he's yes. more than just taxi. Um, He's Man, also he's, a diabolical villain. When well, he there you be. go. So I, I, when I think of uh, Christopher Lloyd villains, and he's played a couple. Um, Judge I, Doom. I can't help but go back to Roger Rabbit. Yep. Oh, my God. Like, terrifying in that movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think if you were a, a young kid, um, I don't know, all the cartoons. I don't know if that balanced that out or not. <laughs> uh, Maybe. Oh, oh, Steve's got a comment for us here. Uh, indeed, she's a sad day in Montreal. Guy Lafleur has passed away. Yes, he yes, has. He, did. he has passed away. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of people that I know. Guy Lafleur made the rounds uh, when we were when uh, when Canada was in Afghanistan. He came over and visited. Jeez. So, yeah, lots of people I know that were there on his visit have been posting their uh, their selfies with him. So I know he made the rounds in Peterborough too, because a lot of people were getting photos and whatnot. I think at the office really yeah and that was up on uh fresh radio there last week uh it was, I mean, last week i guess it really wasn't it was everywhere this yeah past week, so no surprise for that but yes we wish the uh, lafleur family uh, all the best in that yep so i guess we should uh dive in here and we do yeah i mean we, 
I should say you, not me, because I didn't really do much work this week. Uh, <laughs> you have some slides for us. I do have slides. Oh, though. that's right. Stuff okay, that's cool. Week, All right. So. so keep us on track. Yeah. Least. So this week we got toys, trailers, news, and more. Toys. I got lots to talk about on toys. It was more, I actually talked about toys today in another online forum that I'm sure is going to come up. Yeah, maybe. All right. All right. Well, first off, it is continuing on that sad trend. Uh, oh, boy. The world of comedy lost a huge star on oh, April 12th. Oh, no. Yeah. The most iconic voice in comedy, Gilbert Godfrey. You know, just the other day, there was a thing that came out, and I, another one that I should have hit the link, and I didn't, and it was like, it was like, <clears throat> like the, they, cl- they claimed it was like the one and only recording of Gilbert in his natural voice. Hmm. And I just assumed that, you know, Iago... Ella, the Gilbert Godfrey that we knew publicly. I just assumed that was his voice. Hmm. I, I mean, have you ever not heard him in that voice? I've heard a dialed back version of it. Like when he did his stint on uh, <laughs> The Apprentice there. On The Apprentice? Yeah, and somebody has oh. gone out and they've collaborated all his best moments of him back okay, talking yeah. Trump. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's going to come up again tonight too, isn't he? Uh, maybe. Donald Trump? Maybe. Oh, for sure he will. For sure he will. If the one slide you sent me earlier this week is anything, he definitely will be coming up again. <laughs> True. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 67 after a long battle with myotonic dystropia type 2. Do we know what that is? I do not. Can honestly. we, can we, oh, I don't know. Can you uh, give me another window and I'll see if I can, uh, actually, you know what? I'll just do it with my phone. Yeah. And I'll keep reading his Sure, bottom. sure. What are we, uh, uh... He started his stand up career at the age of 15 uh, doing open mic nights in New York City. And he would go on to be cast in Saturday Night Live. Uh, he would do promos for the newly formed at the time MTV and right, right, had right. several appearances on The Cosby Show. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. And these roles would land him on the silver screen in films like Beverly Hills Cop 2, Problem Child 1 and 2, and The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he would also give a more than stellar performance as Iago the Parrot in wow. Disney's Aladdin. I think a lot of people of our of our age kind of. I certainly remember him more from hugely that. Hugely memorable. Yeah, that's kind of the. Uh, I mean, before that, I don't really think of him as anything else. Although I will say this: there was a clip that uh, came back around since he uh, since his passing. And uh, do you remember when the Hollywood Squares was on? Yes, and, he was uh, on there. Tom Tom Bergeron, uh, who be uh, Dancing with the Stars. Tom yep. Bergeron was the host of that show, and man, there is a clip between uh that gilbert Gottfried features in quite uh, prominently where <laughs> rare rare time when both contestants it was a five square win so nobody got a line but they needed like the five the fifth square to win and it was gilbert <laughs> and this the the questions kept going back and forth from both contestants and they went on a on a streak of wrong answers that was like four and like four or five each and oh, every time he was like trust me i know this one and so then they're like i'll agree and and he's like you fool (laughs) Uh, it was it was pretty cool to watch uh so um his thing his condition apparently was a heart condition okay it's a heart condition now i don't know enough about the condition to know how it affected him but i mean mean, affected him enough well obviously the the end result was not yeah yeah and right up to the end you know he was still out doing stand-up selling out live performances across north Apparently, america there was some some talk about his final twitter maybe his final tweet was something poetic or something like hmm. in a, in a sort of like oh in in uh in hindsight kind of thing but again i i didn't see it so i'm not sure yeah i haven't seen that either but uh he'll also be known as uh the guy who told considered among comedians the dirtiest joke of all time what even like beating george carlin beating george carlin uh, we won't be repeating that joke here and you know don't google it unless you're yeah, don't, yeah if no. you're easily offended do not google it how about you know lock your kids up or something? maybe <laughs> yeah it's it's not safe for work whatsoever or ask, ask your kids what it is maybe they already know could be <laughs> who knows but yeah you know he will be missed you know I, i'm trying to think what do you remember the last thing you saw man uh actually i think it was that uh was it college humor or funny or die where he did the reading of 50 shades of gray? I was going to say that's the, <laughs> that's the last thing I remember him doing too. Yeah. But Oh my uh, God. That yeah, was yeah. funny. Yeah. Well, I can't even repeat. <laughs> no, you can't repeat that oh, one no, either. I can't repeat it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Oh, well, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, what a legacy though, to leave behind. I mean, uh, you know, 
a legendary comedian who's i mean as you say the, the voice of voices and we yep. will uh we will remember him although you know what's really cool um this came up in another conversation i had this week the whole uh it's a kind of the uncanny valley you know if you if you put enough of his voice through that that particular software it could be recreated and he hmm. could he could live on maybe that's how they did luke skywalker in uh season two of mandalorian and that's sure. how they're doing val kilmer uh, uh iceman uh kazanski in uh, maverick they've digitally huh. recreated his voice weird yeah so i'm really i hope it's not like like in the uncanny valley that uh, luke skywalker was in because it was a little I liked it, but it was a little robotic. Hmm. I'm hoping they do a little bit better with. Uh, well, it's just going to keep getting better and better. I, I agree with that. I totally do. Uh, so next up, uh, another sad note. Wait, are we staying? Oh my god! Yeah, that yeah. one. I for the Star Wars universe, they suffered a loss as well this past week. Yeah. Uh, Rio Hackford, son of director Taylor Hackford and the IG11 actor in The Mandalorian, has yeah, passed away. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize now that you say that that there was an actor. It's. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, wouldn't you performance capture or at least have something somebody there, there to represent for the actors for to act to off, off of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cuz you watch, I mean, you want was he both seasons? I believe so. You watch some of the stuff that he does. Well, I guess he would only be the first season though, wouldn't he? Uh oh yeah, I guess that's true cuz he goes out he's a, more of a statue in, a, in season in a, 2. <laughs> maybe he was the statue. I don't know. Maybe. Put on this green suit, stand on that plinth. Yeah, <laughs> hold your blaster up. <laughs> He did talking about, you know, kind of robotic and I mean, fitting that it's a robot, but I mean, I just, and again, maybe it's because of the television budget. I didn't think that there really was a performance capture for that character until you had mentioned that. Oh yeah. It's a guy. Yeah. 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 But he wasn't just an actor. He was a beloved club owner, a director and actor as well. He reportedly died of an illness on Thursday, April 14th in Huntington Beach, California, and uh, no. only 52 years old. Unspecified illness. Yeah. So are we thinking COVID and, and they're just not saying? Maybe. Who knows? Could be. Uh, his passing was confirmed by his brother, Alex Hackford. Yeah. And Alex was also the one who revealed that the swingers actor had passed away due to an undisclosed illness. So he's right, the one right. withholding that info, I guess. But uh, in addition to being an actor in films like Jonah Hex, Pretty Woman, and Strange Days, uh, he was also a respected club owner and was known for managing Matador and One-Eyed Jacks in New Orleans. Oh, these are clubs. Yeah. I wonder if they survived the flood. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, also, he managed uh, Homestead in San Francisco. It's been a long time since I've been on the nightclub circuit, and I've never visited a nightclub in the United States, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Those clubs don't stand out to me. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm. I borrowed this part from uh, an article I read online because honestly, I'm not super familiar. But yeah, sure. Uh, as someone who was close to rock bands, he also directed music videos for Josh Holmes' Desert Sessions and Corrosion of Conformity. Oh, oh, Josh Homme. Josh Homme. That's uh, the lead singer from uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Okay. Yeah. 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 So also he, uh, all uh, over the board. Them crooked vultures. Mm. I wonder if that's the. Oh. I don't know. Interesting. Josh Homie, also the guy who uh, kicked that camera woman in the face at a concert. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Yeah. What a. And, and I'm not a huge Queens of the Stone Age fan, but I got to tell you, I saw the footage on that, and uh, there is no way that that wasn't intentional. And I just mm -hmm. lost it in like a crap ton of respect for that guy. So mm. just because you make good music doesn't mean you're not an a hole. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Rio is known to Star Wars fans as the onset performer of IG 11 the droid who is voiced by Taika Waititi in The Mandalorian. And his most recent role was as manager in the biographical drama, Pam and Tommy. Wait, who's manager? Uh, he plays the manager, I guess, of either Pam or Tommy in the show. I watched the whole thing and now I don't even know who we're talking about. <laughs> Maybe it was, oh, you know what? Maybe it was, he must've been clean shaven for that. Probably. Cause I, now I kind of think that maybe, yeah, it was, it was Pam's manager. Yeah, so which great, uh, great little mini series. I haven't seen it. it yet, but it's totally worth watching. Yeah, I mean, you really get a lot. Of, it it kind of really pulls at your heartstrings about how much crap she went through, and uh, he didn't make it any easier for her, mm. which is really unfortunate. Because I think, uh, you know, the the performances in that are really good. Like it really comes, they really come across as as credible performances, and I think if the performances were anything like 
the 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 real life couple you know you 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 kind of you feel sad for them by the end of it mm. you know the that whole lot of there's a whole lot of uh oh they let it out you know they just it was a big publicity thing and that that kind of is pervasive throughout as it was as it was happening mm. but man you get this like sense of like man everybody's just a sad story in this including the guy who stole the tape oh yeah 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 definitely pam and tommy check it out it's uh in canada on it's disney on the, yeah it's on the uh, star tab on your disney plus yeah. yeah got another one from steve here well steve you are correct sir the doctor strange trailer does look good yeah. doctor strange in the multiverse of madness uh, as we're talking about should be good now we're not actually we didn't actually get slides for that we don't have slides we can still one. talk about it though. We, can, though we can totally talk about that for a couple minutes if mm. you want to um as far as the the uh, the multiverse of madness goes, now this is just following on the heels of all the things that I think have been, uh, I would say, started all the way back in Wandavision. I'd say it started before that in Spider Man No Way Home. No Way Home. Uh, or did No Way? Sorry, home. sorry. Wandavision was long before that. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Wa- I think Wandavision is. The I saw start. it out of order, so yeah, my timeline's that's what... <laughs> out of order. Uh, Wandavision, and then of course we did. Uh, We've we've had snippets of like weird things happening all the way through Loki. Obviously, was a yeah. big one, and then the What If series. What if, uh, and that plays in quite heavily into this uh, film because if you did not watch What If, spoiler, you're getting a, a an original uh, What If character. Uh, well, I can't confirm that, but um, it sure as hell seems like it's yeah. a, one of the What If characters is dropping in to uh, to play in this movie, and that looks really exciting. Yeah um variants uh the, of course this, all the variants stuff yep. that we talked about through loki uh plays a big role and we know for a fact we're getting uh at least some resolution to the wandavision at least two variant stranges yep um including defender strange yep. so that's going to be interesting wanda's kids are back at least for a minute yeah so they're i always thought that that was going to be the the crux of her the, the, of her like motivation going forward was like they're out there somewhere and she's going to try and get them back yeah uh, and again like i am i'm pretty disconnected from the comic books so i'm not really you know i don't know if that's a if that's a through line through the books honestly i don't know i never read that uh, era. but you know what i her stint at motherhood at least in the show i liked it and i thought yeah. it was good and i actually thought those kids i thought that their performances were pretty good so yeah. uh I'd be interested in seeing that. I'm more interested to see will the white vision turn up in this one? I, he might. I think that, uh, you know, given sort of the, the position that he was in at the end of. Yeah. Cause he's flying a vision. Find it, himself. It's all, yeah, exactly. Going on the, on a, on a one, one Android, one synthoid uh, road trip. Maybe. Maybe. Is that what we can call it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Maybe he'll come back and he'll rain Wanda in because I know Wanda has been positioned as this, like, quasi villain in the movie but i think yeah. that's a bit of a misdirect too right well she even says to strange right like you know i break the multiverse and i get penalized yeah for it. she's you vilified it, you for get, it. you're a hero a hero yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah so uh thank you steve for mentioning the the doctor strange trailer because we but there's another trailer that just came up that there we are going to talk about yeah, we got i don't, I don't know where that is in the uh, grand scheme of things but it but, is coming uh, we did have a leak happen not too long oh we ago. did yeah yeah before the trailer came out yeah uh, the Thor Love and Thunder wave of Marvel Legends figures. Somebody got a hold of the warehouse shots, and is this the is this the first time we've had an all movie wave? Um, I'm so used to like you know a, a handful was the of Captain Marvel a full movie wave with the exception. No, I guess it had Greg Gargoyle in it. Uh, it did have Greg Gargoyle in it. Yeah. So and then the the bath was what the Cree uh, the Cree Century yeah. Century yeah, and it was a comic book thing. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This might actually be because I mean the last time I bought. Now I've only ever bought like maybe one, maybe two full waves. I bought the whole wave to get the Hulkbuster, mm. and that was a mix of movie and, and comic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all movie figures here, and I gotta say, uh, with the exception of Gore, who is a, a major departure from his comic appearance, mm. but that then again, does that just boil down to you know the general movie going audience and? It needs to be. Does this there character is a have whole to be? Lot of connective tissue with that guy. 
does this does this character have to be recognizable as Christian Bale? By the way, Christian Bale playing the the, the big villain in this one, Gore the God Butcher. Oh, and there he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> nice. Well done. Yeah, it gives us our first look at his character because he's not in the trailer. I, I've been pretty critical sort of in the action figure department on on likeness. And, and I'm going to talk about this again tonight. The, the action figure that we're looking at, this one of Gore, do you think that's a pre-production sample or do you think that's full production? I think it's full production. I really hope so because um, this may be one of the last waves of Marvel Legends that we are going to see with the window box packaging. Mm -hmm. That's something else that'll come up here it in, is. in a little bit. But uh, yeah, so I mean, if that if that is indeed what he looks like, uh, then I would say that the portrait on that figure is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, we got a comment here from Sean. Uh, we need more baths. Well, Andy, yes, back we do. back it up one slide, and we'll go back and look at the. Uh, well, the, actually, I got a slide coming up here. Oh, to do you, focus you've got it. In okay, on the bath from this wave. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. There is going to be a bath in this one, and I think it's a. It is it's an, it's an appropriate choice. It, I think it's yeah. right. It's still movie themed. So he's a he's a big chunky character. He is. I you know not a, an unreasonable choice for a bath. No. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this wave, it also gives us brand new sculpts for the Mighty Thor, King Valkyrie, Teen Groot, Star-Lord, Ravager Thor, and of course... Yeah, our... Uh, is our this even a spoiler at this point? Oh, I don't know. We get Jane Foster uh, as Mighty Is that Thor. not... Uh, see, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and she comes with both helmeted and unhelmeted versions. I... I like it. I, uh, I... I like it. I'm all in, I think, on this one, to be honest with you, and it's been a long time since I've been all in, but because it's an entire, it's a movie wave. Oh, Kimberly says, uh, figures look great. Oh my and God. Do I they ever agree? So they really do. I guess I should uh, go out on a limb and say, if my, if my wife is saying that they look great, that's like a, a green light. A, that's a green light. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean we're getting those honey? <laughs> yeah. You got to give it to Mar or Hasbro at this point though, because after the leak happened, they went full bore and just revealed everything. There was, yeah, and I mean, it, it didn't take very long. It no. was, what, maybe a, a, a day? If that, maybe. yeah. Not so even. they had all the stuff ready to go. It just... Do you feel got... like... Do you get the impression that uh, Natalie's costume in this is uh, heavily based on some of the previous uh, Thor designs we've seen in the films? Maybe, but I think they're leaning a little bit towards Lady Thor. Like, okay. the actual from her... From her run in the yeah. books. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But... I was going to say like the top part of her outfit looks a lot like uh, the, the uh, almost like Valkyrie or even Sif maybe like her, her uh, cinematic costume. And then of course, like on the, on the, the skirt piece there, like the, I don't know what you call those, the round discs uh, that, that typically are associated with uh, Thor and his chest. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly all the elements are there. Uh, we got another comment in here from red Swenson. Uh, only took a couple billion dollar movies to get Natalie Portman to turn her opinion of Marvel movies around. <laughs> you know, I'm not, so I am not so close to this that I know the ins and outs of, of why she's come back. I was of the impression that Kevin Feige played a, a role in this and that there was some like behind the scenes discussion. Well, there could be not saying that the discussion did not include dollar signs, which I'm sure it did. But... Well, in her career, I'm sure she doesn't want to get typecast. Uh, I, is it? Could you typecast her at this point, though? Look at I mean, she's sci-fi queen, really. Well, uh, Black Swan. I guess, yeah, she's sure. Already uh, that, though. Leon the professional. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's already. I think she's got enough going for her that she can kind of pick and choose what she wants to do. Yeah. But there's merit to what uh, to what Red is saying that you know, multi-billion-dollar uh, film franchise, and what what's the expression? Don't bite the hand that feeds. Yeah. Well, the, in that regard. Has she not already bitten? I would think and so. now this is like, it must have sweetened it somehow. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm going to look into that a little bit more because now you've got my interest peak. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, back to our build a figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is Korg. And I like him. He's a very different sculpt than the one we got in the Ragnarok two pack. He is. But again, there is a sequence in the trailer, um, which we're going to take a look at a little bit later. But uh, where Thor is is also fur trimmed. Yeah, so I gotta wonder so if sporting that's sporting a little bit of Norse stuff going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but um, what do you think of the? Uh, can we go back to? I don't know. Do you have Do you have pics of all of them? Uh, just the one. Just, okay, let's go. Let's go back to the that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ravager Thor. What do you think of that? 
I like it. <laughs> and, a, and as it's going to get pointed out later, it does resemble one of the comic appearances of a Thor. I think it looks great. I love that the world tree is his t-shirt. Yeah. Um, I just, there's something about it. Like he still fits in with the ravagers though. If Marvel does like an official, like here's a, a branded T I'll, yep. I'll be buying that one. Uh, Star Lord with a beard. That's, that's been talked about in the last week. What do you think? Eh, I like it. Um, as my wife would say, uh, it's Peter and he's still got a blue stripe on his coat. So it's still very much, uh, consistent with his appearance across uh, all of the the film franchise so far. Well, he doesn't have to shave for Gamora at this point. Really, you know that's something else. Um, will we see? Because right now the trailer and trailers, if anything, this one has done a good job at at, at hyping yeah. the film. Um, I I thought you know the the indication was that the Guardians were going to be around for a lot more of the film, but the trailer kind of gives you the idea that they might only be there for a little bit yeah like okay you need to go find yourself now bye bye is there going to be anything on the search for gamora maybe or maybe that's why they might exit the picture yeah i guess we could save that for the more of a, the True. trailer discussion but yeah the figures look great do you, you still think that that's um teenage group uh, no when you see a side by side with the group from Endgame, okay this one is noticeably chunkier he is. he's grown oh, okay good 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 and i do i mean i love the looks for all of them i like that valkyrie's back she's got a cape looks great yep it's looks not, all regal it's not white so i <laughs> have to worry about keeping this one clean no nope. <laughs> uh, all right all right that's cool super cool but uh hasbro didn't stop there they also announced a role-playing hammer oh. with electronic effects you know i lo- i have uh, I don't have any of those, but I do. I do have some of the Hasbro role play stuff. I've got. Uh, I've got a helmet, and I. I really, really like it. It's hard for me to want to because if, I feel like as soon as I get one, I have to have them all. <laughs> Which is why I stayed. I didn't get the Iron Man helmet. I didn't get the Cap Shield because I'm like, if I do this, I'm gonna yeah, need them all. It's a big road to go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, we already have in our place. We here in our in our house, we have a a fair uh, collection of, of film props uh, or prop weapons as I should, uh, as I could say, but uh, uh, I don't know. I don't have enough wall space, but I would love to own them. <laughs> and this one, it's uh, the reformed version. You see a little bit of uh, lightning or energy coming through on it. Well, this, this to me is exciting because it says something is afoot in the sense that this isn't a, a multiversal no, this uh, copy. Isn't this a isn't one. a, this isn't necessarily a, a reforged. This looks like the pieces of the original Molnir that were smashed by hell. Uh, look to be bound together by the 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 power of Thor. Maybe I don't know, but I am looking forward to finding it's out. It's nice to see Molnir back. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. Do you think there'll be a, a moment that will top the uh, the dual wield there, uh, or the the cap the cap moment? Yeah, it's, that's going to be a hard one to top. If- that is going to be super hard to top, oh. but yeah, I might do it. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, next up here, uh, Netflix didn't have a great week. Uh, that's been an interesting topic of discussion because there's been some now, even before they released these numbers, you do know that they were talking about alternative uh, pricing models yeah. that there was discussion. Uh, sorry. There was discussion of, password sharing Mm -hmm. that's been around for quite a while and i mean i don't know about you but i mean how many people do you know that are uh, you must know a half a dozen people or more i know i do i know people that are password sharing i share it with my wife well so here's the thing it doesn't go past the house though well this here's the thing about that um we talked about this before the the password sharing thing and, and they're talking about cracking down on it yeah how is that enforceable how is it enforceable? Are they looking at now? I think that part of that is when Netflix went out and they made profiles uh, a feature where so you have your profile, yeah. it's got your settings and your shows and your wife's got her profile and your kids have their profiles. Well, are you looking at a household? Uh, and, and I mean, you've got a, you've got how many people you've got one, two, three, yeah, we've got, got what, four, f- six four people pro- in your six, house. Yep. Six people in your house. If you're all watching Netflix and you all have your own, uh, your own, oh, that's an interesting uh, thought there too. Uh, Dan says uh, IP tracing. That's true. So if all of those are in the same house, then we should be okay, I guess. Yeah. But what happens when you take your tablet or whatever to 
Montana's. Well, there you go. Your kid decides to log in from there. I'm sitting at Tim Hortons watching the movie on my phone. Yeah. Um, which is not impossible. I've seen people do that. Oh, IP. There's another one. Yes. Yes, Zach, you're right. IP. I'm just a I'm a technological impaired <laughs> dunce. <laughs> what do you mean they're always watching us? Uh yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. It, it uh glad to know that people are watching. So the other thing is uh there was a, a huge drop of subscribers. Yeah, they uh they lost something like quarter to half a million subscribers. Yeah, and I mean the the big uh the big thrust of that was uh, the suspension of service in, in uh, russia in russia but i i don't get how you can cut off service to an entire country and not expect your subscription count to go down well yeah i mean they can't pay you with money that's been outlawed are you gonna u- use the war in russia to release your numbers like people maybe they won't notice yeah exactly <laughs> um no no netflix we see you we saw what you did um and it, you know what i said this when we, were, we talked about this yesterday and the whole alternative subscription model that that ad based modeling you know what it was coming whether they had a loss of a profit loss or, or not or not it, it was coming yeah is that i have no way of knowing this but do you think that this ad based subscription model do you think that the pricing will be attractive enough to uh actually um uh, entice people to switch over to it i don't think so i see I your point i don't know what your point now switch that i don't even see what you're talking about this guy oh okay well there you go but uh i don't think it's going to entice anyone if anything it's going to cause people to leave like you go to netflix to get away from commercials that is true the whole uh the whole model was based on commercial free yeah well and tailored exactly to you it it didn't start that way. Netflix, Not, no, oh, Netflix, I guess it started Netflix, in the box. Didn't Netflix it? started as a, uh, a rental, ma- a mail in rental service. Yeah. yeah. Rent your movies from us and we'll mail them to you. Yeah. So that kind of killed Blockbuster. But again, yeah, did it ever. <laughs> um, the whole, but I mean, the streaming, uh, the streaming world has changed so quickly, it has. especially in the last couple of years where everybody and their dog suddenly wants to have their own. And it's like, Half the reason why I, I, I dumped cable and got rid of satellite was so that I could just watch shows. I mean, I, I'm at, I've succumbed to the, the, real, the reality that I don't read print media anymore. I don't get, you know, I don't subscribe to a traditional newspaper. Um, I get all my stuff online. Hmm. And I mean, there isn't, uh, you know, a, a news article or a news story out there that you cannot find for free yeah. that you need. So same sort of thing with my, uh, with my television, uh, my viewing habits, but it's, it's funny now because everybody wants to, you know, have their own. It's almost like cable all over again. It is. Yeah. yeah. And it's all connected. Like with the cost of living continuing to rise, you know, people are being forced to choose what stays and what goes. Yeah. And that yeah, comes yeah, down yeah. to a matter of content. So sorry. Know. what I missed that comment there. Dan had a, another comment saying they could tell the difference between cellular login and a home based router. Now, Dan, you work in computers, so you definitely have the advantage on that one because I'm not really sure. See, this is it. I'm just a plain old user. I don't know how any of this technology works. I will take your word for it. Um, I guess the bottom line is, is this going to negatively impact you know, the majority of consumers, maybe, I don't know. I, I think if, uh, if, if the pricing, if this, if an ad based, uh, model allows Netflix to drop the price, I, I don't expect it to drop, but let's just say, uh, put a stay on it so that, you know, some of the price, like we've seen price creep in the action figure world in the last yeah. few years, how quickly that's gone up. And, uh, Netflix even has gone up a couple of times in the yeah. last decade. So let's say, you know, maybe instead of getting two price increases in a decade, we get, you know, one price Mm. increase in a decade. If that's enough and there's enough buy-in to the, to the ad based model, I'll just keep what I have uh, and, and enjoy it until it comes to a point where I can no longer get what you need. Yeah. 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 If I need to go to ad based, having that option might be good. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a wait and see for me. Yeah. But, uh. In other news, yeah, 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 uh, the 60th anniversary of Spider Man is coming at us this year. Oh, really? And the series is relaunching again, I believe, this week. I think it might have been pushed back from last, but uh, 
So wait, we'll uh, another. We're going back to one. Oh, okay, but we're our... this will be the sixth volume of the book. Do they still do the stupid zero issue? Thing? Uh, no, not so much. But they do like point whatever issues if oh. they need extra story. Oh, oh like in betweens. Yeah, but uh, I don't know why you don't just give it a full number. Well, <laughs> that's the thing with this one. In six issues, it's going to probably revert because that'll be the nine hundredth issue. Now, are we talking that's the 900th issue since, since Spider-Man's first appearance in Amazing Fantasy? Uh, no, that'd be the 900th since Amazing Spider-Man number one. Oh, okay, back okay. In 67, I think. Sure, sure. But 900 books or 900 single issues is what you're saying. Yep. Do annuals count? No, they're numbered no, individually. Those are they're numbered a by secondary themselves. thing. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. are okay. just Spider-Man straight books. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, I've seen this cover before. Yeah, you've shown I'm, it to me. I'm before. not a fan of this. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about the uh, the obvious um, um, the, the the thumb in the room? Uh, you can talk about the thumb <laughs> in the room. I'll talk about the thwip in the or the thwip not in the room. The, not the thwip. Okay, yeah. so the thumb in the room. There's uh, some discussion about the the pose, the that thumb placement. The thumb placement makes uh, makes it look like the the spider penis. <laughs> can I say that? Yeah, I don't see why not. The, the spider dong. Oh, <laughs> the spider appendage. Yeah, um, it's just some poorly placed anatomy for uh, for a comic book, especially uh, from uh, somebody who is so attached to the character. Like, yeah, not, yeah, and yeah. it's not even like him first. It's you want to talk about first? I was gonna say you want to talk about who that is? Yeah, it's John Romita Jr. Romita Jr. <laughs> and on top of that, cover. he's missing a finger because I don't care which book it is, but Spider Man does not finger gun his webs out. It yeah, is a thwip. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a thwip. Oh, <laughs> we got a comment from Dan coming in here. Dan says, "I can see his Peter Tingle." <laughs> Peter oh. Tingle for the win. Yeah, <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, will this book get recalled? Because there's like 50 covers or something for it. I don't know. I used to hack on McFarlane for his exaggerated. Uh, I love McFarlane. His exaggerated posing because it was just anatomically impossible. But this ranks up there with like. Dumb, da dumb, dumb, <laughs> dumb. They're going for it this time. It's so bad. Uh, and w- as soon as you set it, like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's there forever. Yeah, it's almost as, uh, man, that's almost more offensive than the, uh, what was it, the Spider Woman cover? Remember that? Oh, the Milo Manera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say she's the, wearing skin tight nothing. Sure. I'd say the, the Peter, and the Frank Cho thing that followed it. The Peter Tingle might be more offensive than that. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Depends what Frank Cho does with it. Oh, we got another co- uh, comment coming in here this time from Kelly. Kelly says that uh, C3PO card comes to mind. I'm not. Do you catch that? I'm not familiar with I'm that. not familiar with the reference, Kelly. Maybe you can expand on that a little bit more because yeah, I remember the, sure. uh, the winterized Wookiee. The winterized Wookiee. <laughs> Happy time, Chewbacca. Do from, tell. I think it was Power of the Force. Okay. Where he's supposed to be covered in snow, but it don't look like no snow. <laughs> You saying Chewie's got a coke habit, uh, or he's got a really, I don't know. <laughs> oh, the golden rod card, the trading card. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up here. Um, let's see if I can get it on my phone. The golden rod. Well, I know he's got a red arm at some point. Uh, he does have a red arm in the sequel trilogy, and. Uh, no, it's not the Mandela effect. He's always had a silver leg. Yeah. Well, um, and at first he was naked. Well, <laughs> chronologically, he was naked. Oh, sorry. I was going by uh, production dates. C- C-3PO. Yoda was in charge of release dates. Golden. Uh, gold, oh, my Lord. I can't even spell. Golden rod card. Inanimate carbon rod. Well, yeah. So there we go. Here we go. Yes. Now that you have mentioned, uh, now that you say that, um, good Lord, we should. <laughs> no, that's awful. That is terrible. That is so, so awful. <laughs> like who, who greenlit that? Like what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> now, will uh, that show to the viewers? If you flip uh, it around, they, you know what? You can bring it up. Uh, you do a screen share on that if you wanted to. That's <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, give me a give me another window, and I'll uh, I'll pull it up for you. Uh, C three PO. This one's bad, folks. 
and then uh, just <laughs> any of those will do. There you go. You can uh, <laughs> screen share. Chrome tab. There it is. I'm new to this. Chrome tab, and then that one. There you go, folks. <laughs> that is, I mean, that's all kinds of wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How the most explicit Star Wars photo of all time made it onto a trading card. <laughs> <laughs> and of a droid. You know, right. some dude in the in the um, <laughs> Facebook generic Facebook user says, "I'm shocked that you guys have never seen that before." You know. I'm shocked I've never seen it before either. I consider yeah. myself to be a pretty heavy duty Star Wars fan, and that's a new one for me. Yeah. <laughs> never seen that one. Just goes to say, you know, you're I'm always learning something, I guess. Yeah. Oh my God. I'd love to know the story behind that. Now I'm gonna have to look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> my God, that might be a whole other episode. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So um, yes, Kelly, very reminiscent of the Goldenrod card, uh, the Peter Tingle. <laughs> uh, the Peter Dingle. Oh, oh my! I don't want to hear about that one. <laughs> right, but uh, in uh, the same vein here, there's also going to be a Spider-Man and Venom title oh, for really? the fast approaching 21st annual Free Comic Book Day. Ooh, nice! Yeah, uh, it's the one day of the year everybody gets a chance to sample some books from a huge variety of publishers. Uh, it's a great day for the comic community in general. Like, even if you don't read, get out to your local comic book shop and you might just find something you didn't know that you'd love. It's been a long time since I've, I've followed um, anything, you know, in terms of, of comic books, but uh, free comic book day is always a, uh, there's always something. Yeah. It's you become know, whether, like a hallowed day for me. Uh, I can remember when they launched and that's, Oh, they launched one of my favorite, favorite uh, runs of green lantern on free comic book day with nice. uh, blackest night uh the, the the little prelude Blackest mm. Night. love that well this year there are 46 different titles to choose from so there's gonna be something for everyone yeah and it's not just the big guys too more of the indie yeah the, there's a lot of indie books that yeah come through lots here. of the independents are getting involved now so they're again like you say there probably is something for everyone yeah and uh we got a little clip here from one of our friends jeff Oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, let's Jeff. play that. This Jeff. Is Jeff uh, from New Books, 1120 Simcoe Street North in Oshawa. And I hope you're all having a fantastic day. It looks beautiful out there. And, um, yeah, free comic book day. It's, it's... So we are going to have tons and tons of free comics. Like, you're going to be able to come in here. And this whole area here, it's got books right now. But this whole area, I'm going to be clearing out. There's going to be a couple tables set up in here, and it's going to be total comics. You'll be able to walk in, grab five to six comics. They'll be, uh, I'll be filling this up with some pops, so you'll be able to grab a pop on the way out. And I might have some other little goodies and stuff. There's going to be balloons and, and stickers and, yeah, there's all types of stuff. It's a great day. There'll be sales on everything in store on that Saturday, Saturday, May 7th. So you come in, you check your stuff out, you, you grab some comics, you pick up some some good merchandise at a at a discounted rate, and yeah, it's going to be a fantastic day. Saturday, May seventh. Hopefully, the weather stands up for us. All the week. So yeah, come on in, check it out, come and chat, have a good time, and I hope you all have a great weekend. And don't forget about us. All right, new out. Thank you. So yeah. Man, like he can phone that stuff in anytime. He's yes. great. <laughs> yeah, he quite often does like little live streams on Facebook and uh, just to let you know time, what's coming out. Half the time I catch them after he's done them because I'm usually doing something else. But, yeah. Uh, no, that's great. And uh, just a reminder that's uh, New Books, North Oshawa, Simcoe Street. Yep. Yeah, hard to miss them. I mean, they're yeah, uh, they're, they're pretty visible there. They're on the west side of uh, of the street. Yeah. Uh, but hey, if, if you're, you're not, yeah, I was gonna say if yeah. you're not, if you're not in Oshawa, you should find your local comic. Yeah, book for more information, go check out freecomicbookday.com. Ah, you should better. be able to direct you to a location. Even better. Yeah. Um. Next up here. <laughs> oh, and here's here, where the Trump part comes. Here in. Here we go. We're going uh, back. <laughs> this one was weird. Uh, this episode this week was uh, the unmasking of rudy giuliani now are you a masked singer fan i was into it for seasons two and three but then it kind of got boring for me this is the thing with being a, a cord cutter and a streamer is that i am so on the outs with some of the the 
can you call this a reality show? I guess it's a reality yeah, show. Somewhat reality show. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of this until like, until it started getting talked about online and, and then hunting down YouTube clips and seeing some of the really like awesome expo uh, yeah. uh, reveals. And this one the other day, it wasn't even that it was Rudy Giuliani. The first thing I read was that uh, Ken had walked yeah, off stage. And I'm stage. like, what, what happened to force a comedian or any of the judges for that matter to, uh, to walk off the stage. And then, of course, to find out that it's uh, the former you know, Trump attorney, former attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Funny. People don't go a former mayor of New York City. Yeah. It's now like you, <laughs> the guy who tried to overthrow yeah, democracy yeah. was like a great mayor, like one of the most well remembered mayors of New York. Horrible, horrible uh, legacy to leave. Yeah. And horrible song, like not a horrible song, but a horrible performance of it. I don't even do you. I got a sh really got short a clip? Clip. Got a clip. Oh, yeah. Let's run that. The head nurse spoke up. Said, leave this one alone. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. George Thorogood. George Thorogood, bad to the bone. One. Yeah, I. I feel bad for him. For George. Yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh my god! But uh, you know, the unmasking, as you said, caused Judge Ken Jong to walk off stage. So this is a uh, still technically a Fox show. It is, which is weird because this is this is, I guess, one of those things that did not fall under the Disney acquisition, hmm. uh, because. I don't know if that falls into there. I don't know how that works. We're not going to see this turn up on, uh, on Disney plus more than likely. No. Oh, and if we do, maybe this episode will be uh, stricken, <laughs> omitted. but it'll live on, on the internet forever. The internet is forever. Yeah. 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 So uh, the second clip here. Yeah. Before I met you, yeah, I'm done. I break a thousand more baby. Wow. So bad. Wow. For a guy who's so outrageously over the top, I have never seen him that serious. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Okay. And, I'm and like the other judges, Jenny and, uh, Oh, Nicole. Okay. They were, they were still towing the company line. They were cheering, you know, acting all, Oh yeah. Great. It's him. Right. But even Robin was kind of like, uh, it's cringeworthy. It is. And not just for the performance, but like, why I know again, I know it's Fox, but even like, well, they asked him because when he did it, when they recorded this, he was like yeah, knee yeah, deep yeah. in the whole scandal trial. Well, oh, they're right, like, so why are you here right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, I wanted to show my granddaughter that you could do anything. I was like, bad timing. So, do you think that's him putting a phone call into somebody and maybe uh, trying to whitewater or <sighs> rebrand himself or something? That's going to take a lot more than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the news was all a buzz with it on Thursday morning. And uh, what was it? I think. NBC or CNBC, they had like a three person panel and they said, you know, is this what reality TV has come to trying to guess the voice of celebrities in furry suits? Yeah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> furry suits. Yeah. Is there, there's an innuendo there. There is, <laughs> but I don't That's know funny. Uh, when they perform well, they perform well. And I know that they do get some like gag type people on there, but. So we got a uh, we got a message. It didn't come through uh, on the stream, but uh, from your wife, uh -oh. who says that free comic book day is Andrew's Christmas. It is. <laughs> it totally is Andy's Christmas. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> so wait, if we say you can't go to free comic book day, you'll like. I I'd be sad. Okay. <laughs> but what if we sent somebody that to get everything for you and then home delivered it? Well, but that. That takes the fun out of it. No, yeah, you want to go. You want to have that experience. Yeah, to see what's new. And uh, talking about comic books again, just for a quick second. Um, fingers crossed the world does not go back at, uh, into lockdown. Mm -hmm. I They're sitting up there. I printed my tickets for Niagara Falls Comic Con. Ooh. So it's official. We are going. Ha -ha. There you go. All right, are you going this year? No. You're not going at all? No. Not at all. Okay. I thought at least to see on the Saturday, but eh. all right. Well, that's fine. I'll take pictures for you. All right. All right, what do you got now? Uh, next up, we got a few more figure reveals that came this week. Oh, nice. And it came out of Hasbro Pulse. Yep. And these are the first batch to do away with that plastic view window. And I got uh, some mixed feelings on that. I do as I, well. I get it. I, I do as well. Um, oh, I did not see all of these. Uh, now, the Dr. Octopus and the Silk I, were a previous oh, okay. mention, but I think they put them in there and, just to balance it out. And Spider-Ham? Spider-Ham, yeah. He's, Spider -Ham. he's packaged with Spider-Man Noir. Is this a uh, is this a reissue of the last ham? I think so. Okay. I mean, I didn't get the last one, so I I don't I don't know. Yeah, so first up here we have the Amazing Fantasy uh 
number 15 inspired 60th anniversary right, figure. Right, right. Did you see there was a, a split screen uh, that went out from Pulse where they showed this figure uh, packaging beside the Toy Biz version of this one? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, it's, that, but. and the Toy Biz one. I mean, you go think about the Toy Biz packaging. Yeah. It's 100% clear right. plastic clamshell. Yep. Huge difference. Uh, do you want to run through the figures first, or do you want to yeah, you want to talk about the packaging? Let's run through the figures. Okay, first. let's do that. So uh, this amazing span, uh, uh, amazing fantasy Spider-Man might just be the most exciting thing for me because to me this is like 60s cartoon Spider-Man with the spider way, the web wings. Yeah, love the web, web wings. wings. Yeah, different yeah. attachments there. Uh, next up, we have the Future Foundation Spider-Man in uh, stealth mode. This is beyond me, so I, I don't know who this is. Uh, it's still Spider-Man, but it, uh, at um, one point, the Fantastic Four were running the Future Foundation. So Spider-Man, who's under the suit? Peter Parker. Peter, okay. Because, yeah. I mean, there's people. There is a lot of spider So that's why I just had to quantify that, who's yeah. under the suit. No, it's still Peter, because, <laughs> okay. again, you know, he's one of the big brains of the Marvel Universe. So that's true. That is true. Yeah. The Future Foundation and... They did some good work before everything went weird. Uh, this is pretty cool, though, because we got a with the Love and Thunder wave, we got an all movie wave. But with this, we have an all Spider-Man. Pretty close to all Almost Spider-Man. All yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. All Spider related anyway. Uh, for the most part. Uh, next up, we have uh, I don't know if this one's a straight up reissue, but yep. I would love to get this one. Yep. It is the Iron Spider. Now, I, yeah, that's the other one. I'm like, is that not a reissue? I don't know for sure, but I, I don't have it. So I currently want it. I always liked this. I mean, I was aware of who the Iron Spider was. So when it came down to the MCU, I was really hoping for something a little closer to this. Yeah. Eh, we didn't get that. But at least they we didn't get something cool. Of, yeah. yeah. We did. The, with the extra arms. Yeah. 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 Or the legs, I guess. Yeah. Extra spider legs. I did like that. But uh, next up, we have technically our first two pack. And it is Spider-Man Noir and Spider-Ham. And this is out of their appearance in Into the Spider-Verse. I can hear Nick Cage going, yes, I know. right now. <laughs> so I, I know they've released both of these before, but I don't know if it's a new sculpt for Noir or not. I don't know. But is he got a, does he have a holster on his leg? Is that like a pistol holster? I believe so. Uh, I wonder, does he actually come with a firearm? Maybe. You know that um, um, uh, Warner Brothers. So uh, this came out in the, the McFarland thing. Warner Brothers, uh, no more uh, because of the uh, because no more pew pews. Yeah, no more pew pews with their uh, toys. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, well, Batman never needed a gun, but there yeah. are wait, DC. Wait, 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 well, wait. so but uh, Batman, uh, Thomas Wayne, Batman. Ah, yes. Right? So characters like him, uh, Deathstroke, a bunch of other characters who are firearm centric. Uh, McFarlane is is doing the uh, adult collector line, the 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 seven inch uh, yeah. DC multiverse. Um, I know this is not talking about Spider-Man or Marvel Legends, but it is action figure related. Yeah. Um, McFarlane has said there is a workaround, um, and the likelihood is that you know will there be generic uh, seven-inch scale weapon packs that are not branded? Mm. Probably. Will right. they? Will they fit in the hands of the <laughs> Warner Brothers uh, proprietary characters? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? They used to do so, with GI Joe. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a whole other story there. Why, why the the current line of GI Joes are all carrying Nerf blasters? Because <laughs> then they don't have to pay a royalty to the people who actually own the the firearms. There you go, like Colt and Six Hour and all those other companies. Yeah, but they use laser blasters in the cartoon. They do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the comic book, well, uh, to some degree, in the comic book too. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you're right. Okay, so back to Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you want all your... that because he had a holster, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, next up, we have another two pack and it is spinning out of the pages of Spider-Man. Renew your vows. It yeah. is Spider-Man and Spinternet. So is this a version of like MJ? Uh, this is a version of MJ. Yes, it is. OK. Uh, the suit she wears there basically mimics a bit of Spider-Man's powers. Right. So he gets power decreased, but she gets powered up. Oh, and I'm pretty sure this is a reissue of the retro Spider-Man. Yep that just came out and everybody is still clamoring for. So if you missed your chance to get it there, I saw all the comments around this yeah. one, people who are like, I'm not paying for a, a retro one. Uh, if this one's coming out, yeah. All you scalpers can go suck it. Basically. But other, <laughs> other than that though, this is the first one to come with a set of web crawling hands. 
I yeah, I see that with the fingertips. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. This, by the way, this is my Spider Man for my Spider Man and his amazing friends display. Yep. Speaking of the amazing friends, because I just happen to have one right here. Uh, yeah, Spider Man and his amazing friends includes this lovely lady. Yeah, Firestar. MJ though, that's interesting. I didn't know that MJ took a turn at uh, at uh, superheroing. Well, it was uh, it spun out of that whole Secret Wars redo really oh the, the 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 more modern recent one, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay okay and then they had a five issue arc there and then they picked it up i think for a 23 or 24 issue regular series yeah before it all came down but well one thing's for sure i mean there's no shortage i mean it's a what's the what's the industry term the marvel legends they're evergreen i mean there's yeah, just there's always never else. ending supply of characters and and likenesses and variations of yeah. things that you can just keep going and going and going yeah. Oh, we got a comment here from Sean. Yeah. 35 bucks for the figures with no build a figure parts. I wish it were that cheap. <laughs> yeah. 35 with no bath. Yeah. If we could all, at 35, I'd be like, okay. Uh, but yeah. sadly, that's not likely going to be the case. No, because we have a slide coming up here with the uh, bad news. Wow. I mean, is it the one the, that there is the GameStop? Uh, oh, okay. Orders. So uh, we can talk about the, we've already mentioned price creep. We've had what two in uh, 20, yep. 2021. We've had, one this year yeah and and they're they're forecasting more uh, uh later on this year yeah so it's not is the action figure uh or, or will adult collectors be relegated to you know will we be pushed out of the of the hobby i don't know it kind of feels like they're trying i mean th this is not the a 38 a 45 or in the case of like defender strange it was like yeah 59, 59. That's not a toy that mom or dad no, or you're not grandma, buying that for little Billy's 10th birthday. Maybe grandma might if grandma's, you know, like, maybe she's because that's grandma's job. She's got to get rid of the spoil. money. Got to spoil them kids. <laughs> right, right. Spoil them because they're not yours. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I, you know, we are sort of the, I can't say the target audience, but we are the ones who are, are spending the big bucks on these particular. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, will there be a point? I'm already at the point now. And I, th I came to this a couple of years ago, I guess when I did the big purge it was uh, I'm never going to be a completist on any toy line. So now it's, it's the, what really emotionally resonates with me. And so now I got to be, not only do I have, and trust me, a lot of stuff emotionally resonates with me. And that's, that's the whole foundation <laughs> of, of nostalgia, problem. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I see a thing and I go, Oh, I really need that. But then I have to go, no, but do I, sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, you know, you know what it's like, I mean, we live in an isolated area, so like you don't, you're, we're already disadvantaged if you're not yeah. buying it or ordering it online. Yeah. It's not like we can hop in the car and be at Walmart in 10 yeah, it's minutes. It's not going to so. be readily available. You got to be. On oh it. yeah. You're right. You're right. For us to go out and do a shopping day is a, is a, well, yesterday was a full day. Yeah. A full day just to go in and hit all the spots where we would get, you know, be able to go and have a, a fairly productive shopping experience. So, yeah. Mm. I know this next one is definitely not on your got to have it list. Which one? It is the two pack of Null and Venom. Yeah. I mean, because uh, what did I say to you yesterday? I'm like, what? Well, I don't understand this Venom thing. What? And what is this? It was like, uh, what did I say? It was uh, Ebony Maw with hair. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, this is from the crossover there not long ago, The King in Black, which is where Null comes out of. I'm not going to lie. Um, if I was a big Venom fan, that's a pretty good looking Venom. Apparently that's a repaint of the movie version that came out not long ago. Is it really? But this time he's got symbiote wing attachments and it looks good to me. Yeah. Like if you need a Venom, this is a pretty good Venom. Yeah. 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 Uh, next up we have the Peter and Ned two pack. All right. Is it, you got any more for this? Uh, you got any more? A couple more actually. Okay. So I'm going to. Yeah. Remember that because we're going to come back to this one because this is where when we talk about the packaging thing, yep. I want to focus on this one. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I'm not exactly uh, sold on the Peter head sculpt on this one. I don't think yeah. it's Tom Holland enough. Well, here's the but thing. The I mean, head's good. So, I mean, unfortunately for us, we're looking at it on a monitor, so you can't, it's hard to tell. The imagery on the box does not necessarily reflect what's the, in the, the box. figure that we're looking at. I mean, it's looking at Ned, so it's not the same pose. I don't know. It looks a little bit better on the box than what it does uh, in the in the side by side. I uh, got a comment here from Sean coming in. Uh, yeah, it says sure. that uh, the uh, Venom one is going for over seventy five dollars. Yeah, it is uh, the movie one. The movie one. The yeah. Movie one. Yeah. Okay. From the uh, Venom pool wave. 
uh, 75 Canadian dollars. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's God. If I'm spending $75 on a figure, it had better. Mm -hmm. That's like <sighs> SH figure arts. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, really, even yeah. some of the like NECA high end or uh, yeah. uh, even some of the, the super, uh, super seven a lot ultimates of the import stuff. Yeah. 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 That's import range. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we've got another one here, and it's not exactly Spidey related, but I know a lot of people have been asking about it. Okay. And it is a new version of Toad from the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. I'm okay with that. You know, uh, I always thought, you know, I, I never understood the, the whole Toad thing. Why does Toad look like a court jester? But uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. It works. And he's being released on that 20th anniversary style. On the, the Toy Biz Retro. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah, it yeah. still includes that clamshell piece, but. Or the plastic bubble. Well, anyway. I mean that. I mean that's Hasbro showing us that uh, you know that clamshells aren't dead in the Completely water. Gone, but no. isn't didn't they put a deadline on it though? Something Maybe. like twenty twenty five or something. Trying to phase out plastics or something. Yeah, it's funny because they're selling plastic. Uh, single use plastics. <laughs> single use plastic. That's the buzzword, right? Single uh, use. Single use plastics. True. And last on the list here, and certainly not least, though, leaping right off the screen of the 1994 Spider-Man series on Fox, we have the Retro Card Lizard. That's a pretty good looking lizard. It's a good looking I'm lizard. I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty good looking In lizard. my opinion, this one's a little bit overdue, though, considering he was the first villain Spidey faced off with in that series. Uh, now, is this, how does this rate compared to the Build-A-Figure one? <sighs> the Build-A-Figure is a whole lot more lethal looking yeah this, this is, is definitely more cartoony cartoony yeah i get that style too. i get that as well but if that's the the version you're trying to assemble then... yeah 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 and it's a whole lot more affordable than the build a figure uh well i don't know i'm, I'm currently in the middle of trying to build that we'll and, see uh, we'll see what the price point is on these when they drop yeah yeah do you know what the release date is on these uh i do not know but i do know that the pre-order has already gone up oh so it's it could be any time between now and uh, three years from now yeah <laughs> but, uh, here, here's our elephant in the room okay and it is the another price well, there you go so i mean here is the now this is the pre-order page the landing page for yeah, them for uh gamestop so look at Canada. that i mean uh let's see their iron spider now they i guess they're pricing him as a deluxe at 47.99 yep okay so i mean basic figure uh basic figure is like 42.99 42.99 now that not isn't necessarily hasbro setting that not necessarily no that is a mix of you know the retailer uh and the i don't even know if hasbro has a minimum uh an map maybe a minimum advertised price for people who are not in there in the retail world man I, again so i look at that and really for me the only thing that kind of got my interest in that was the the peter and ned set yeah i'm like oh it's another mcu set and ned's kind of a you know great little sidekick character he is i get can i call him the sidekick is that right is I, he the, he's sidekick? the guy in the chair you're the guy in the chair yeah okay fair enough um don't think i'm gonna get them really don't think i'm gonna get them not at 80 dollars. at wow. 80 dollars, that puts them each at, uh, in the 40 dollar range yeah and as as a 40 dollar action figure um no he should be like a 29 dollar action figure <sighs> or less i if in a perfect world i mean i get it there's always going to be price creep there's going to be price increases and the cost of doing business is just that it, and it never goes down no but we have seen so many price hikes over the, the, the last two years. It's uh, just unreal. And I know that supply and demand is, you know, supply has really been the, the big issue. Uh, I mean, COVID has affected everything and, and we're seeing it in the, in the wallets. Yeah. So um, fortunately I have this hobby, which is far more expensive than action figures, but uh, purchases are, are far uh, less <laughs> you know I, you know i replaced a camera this year uh to the tune of several what i could have replaced several action figures with but it's a you know it's a once in several years purchase right mm. so i don't know i'm not out of toys i'm gonna be much more selective can we go back to that uh the, yeah. two, the two pack image i want to talk about the packaging here about this whole oh so let's I'm, I'm gonna i'm packaging. gonna put that out there right now um, you guys who are watching, who are uh, in the toy communities or who are uh, action figure collectors, this is the new packaging. This is an all, uh, all cardboard, all cardstock packaging. There is no window on this. Uh, this is not a pre-production uh, uh, photo of what the figures will look like in the box with the with the blister. No, this is the box. This, this is, is what it's. This art. is what it's going to be, which means. 
you will no longer have the tactile experience of picking up the package on the shelf, visualizing the figure in person, and then going, oh, that looks, and I've done this many times. It looks better in hand than it does yeah. in photos. So, And the more sinister aspect. Well, you want to talk about that? A lot of figure swapping going on. How many LeBron Jameses do you need to see without heads? Yeah. Now that's it's already pervasive. Um, are people going to be so bold that they're going to go and uh, figure swap in the store with these? Maybe. How many empty boxes are going to get returned? <sighs> Who knows? Right. I mean, already your big retailers, uh, Walmart, Toys R Us, don't care. Yeah. They, they just, they get a return policy. They just take it back. And you know what? You cannot blame the retailer on that. It's not their job to know. Minimum wage Johnny and Jenny, who have two kids and are having craft dinner and soup, do not know who your favorite superheroes are, nor should they. It's not their responsibility. No. They just have a job to do, and that's all they're doing. It just makes it that much easier for the unscrupulous yeah. people that are out there who are already doing it, who will do it, who see this as a wonderful opportunity to. Yeah, you know, they do it now with a window box and you can blatantly see what absolutely. they've Absolutely. And then people like you and I who like go, that's not right. Yep. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. And I, I mean, it, it hurts. It hurts the, it hurts the retailer. It yep. hurts the, the, the collector. It hurts, it hurts, hurts the, everybody. Yeah. Yeah not a victimless crime it's not a less of an issue i think and, and i had this discussion uh made a comment today on a youtube video that talked exactly about this it's not the best uh, solution uh oh you got a comment here coming oh. in what's that uh <laughs> zach says uh, i'm gonna feel like brad pitt what's in the box in the box. i get certain figures and i can see when they're messed up yeah absolutely That's true. like you get a wrong paint app or something and... so here's yeah so let's talk about that for a second manufacturers defects now yes. uh, i work in the toy industry and i see this all the time i see a high-end collectible figure comes in from wholesale um a hand has fallen off oh, a sorry. head has fallen off it's not broken but it's fallen off yeah well uh, the savvy collector, even though they know, like, okay, it's not broken, but I'm an inbox collector, and so I'm not, never I'm never gonna, open. I'm never gonna buy that one. I'll buy the one that's intact. Yeah. Um, but again, that's why this is part of why I wanted to focus on this one. Uh, going back to that whole, it looks better in hand than it does. Yeah. The question I have specifically about this one because it's their movie characters. Again, pre-production sample or production. Mm. because a lot of the we see the renderings a lot right you see yeah. a a rendering of an action figure before you see a prototype yeah if that is, if the photograph on that is pre-production and i open the box and the portrait on the figure does not look like it does on the box that's the thing that's going to bother me the most because i'm an open box collector everything i buy gets opened it all gets uh, put up somewhere here there around Somewhere on the shelf. Somewhere here on the shelf. Them. It Yes, but it is openly displayed. And if it does not look like what the box is telling me it looks like, I kind of feel like it's it's kind of false advertising. A little bit. Misleading yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I've said this before, but like with what <laughs> McFarland, why are, are you still hand painting the damn things? Like he might be. Get on with the face print technology because the 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 there's no consistency with the portrait on a McFarlane figure, at least yeah. with the, with a Hasbro figure now and Marvel legends kind of led the way with the face print technology. But again, that's the thing that bothers me the most is that the figure's not going to look like what I expect it to look like because yeah. the photograph is a pre-production thing. If Hasbro can come out and, and say, no, no, the photographs are production samples. Fine. Then I, I I'm okay with this. And to some degree, I, I mean, I already deal with this in some of the other packages that I, I buy transformers. There's no window on a Titan class transformer. Yeah. There's no window on a, on a, um, oh my God, what's, what are they calling it now? Commander class, like uh Jetfire with commander mm. class. There's no windows on those Skylinks, no window on that. Do you, do you have that faith in the company to deliver on what they're advertising? I don't know. I don't know. With the um, amount they're raising the price. Yeah. It's scary. That sinister, but the sinister part of it that does it is that does bother me. Do you do you buy from a reputable online retailer and with the uh, you know the understanding that if it's I buy from the from warehouse, yes, if I yeah. buy it from the online retailer, um, they're not going to risk their name to yeah. to pull a fast one on me. So the 
the reasonable expectation is that I am getting what I'm paying for and it will not be a Johnny rotten guy who, who figure swapped and put it and returned it. And then, yeah. and then Walmart put it back on the peg, Yeah, which we've seen many, many times in person too. All right. Well, that's all I got to say on the packaging. Yeah. It's, it's not as big a concern to me just because I'm an open box guy, but for all you inbox collectors, I really feel, I feel for you. I'm yeah. sorry. All right, you got it. What do we got now? Uh, we got one more before we dive into a trailer. Oh, so all right. This what one is ongoing, and uh, it is Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. The libel suit oh, boy. is going on right now, and it's just finished its second week. He lost his case in the UK. Did he? He did. Uh, he tried to to sue her in the UK, and the, in the UK, the said no. They basically threw it out. Um, so they were allowed to print the article. Hmm. And uh, this, I don't know. I mean. I don't... I get the Coles notes version of this one. Be, like I get sort of the, cause I follow a lot of enter, obviously considering what we do, yeah. I follow a lot of entertainment outlets. So the entertainment outlets don't necessarily report word like, word. like hard journalism. You know yeah. what I mean? You it's all the... buzzwords and kind of fluffiness. So you get like the headline about him admitting to his drug use with other celebrities. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff, which I don't know, but like gut feeling. And I, I have no basis of there's no basis of fact. There's no, this is just my opinion. But from what I've heard coming from both camps, I feel like they were uh, toxic for each other. I, I mean, look at this, the duration of their marriage. It was yeah. about a, a year. If it was that. really, really, really short. And I think that she, as much as she's saying that she was a victim and I'm not saying that she wasn't, she very well could have been and probably yeah. was. If you think you've been victimized, Hey, that's, that's for you. And I, I believe you, but I also think that she gave as good as she got. Mm -hmm. Does it make it right for either of them? No, no, but, um, I don't think either of them are as innocent as they, uh, no. as they would want you to believe. Well, I did read one thing where they focused in on a 2013 text message. Okay. From uh, Depp to his friend, Paul Benton. Oh, Vision. Vision, yeah. Oh. And uh, he had mentioned some very dark actions to take against her. What? Uh, is this the one about... Um, possibly burning her. Oh, I thought I was going to say, was it a hanging or a burning? Burning. Burning, okay, okay. And Benton, replies, you know, upon careful consideration, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> what do you mean? But uh, <laughs> his, his reaction to that in the courtroom is, you know, in the heat of the pain I was feeling, I went to dark places. And yeah. you know, it's a text message between friends. It There's, doesn't mean yeah. you're gonna follow through on it. No, you're you're right. But um, you know, yeah, people say a lot of things uh, in the heat of the moment that they don't mean. Yeah. The problem is when, when it you're, goes past. That. Sure. Yeah. I mean, when you're in in a court of law, it's that you know that whole Miranda rights thing. Anything you say can and will It'll be used against you. Yeah. 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 And again, you know how you know my feelings on this. And I'm, I'll say it again. We just touched on superheroes, so I mean, it's it's poetic here when I say, like, if you're a celebrity, being a celebrity is a superpower, and you have an obligation to use a superpower for good. And if you don't use it for good, then you're a villain. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So you know, and there's there's a whole thing. You know, superheroes have secret identities, and that's why they're kept at home. Yeah. And off <laughs> off of television. Eye. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think this yeah. trial has the potential to get a whole lot uglier before it's all said. A hundred percent, it does. For sure, you know yeah. who knows where it'll end up. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens for Aquaman three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you catch that he did say this? Is the one thing that came out this week, uh, specifically entertainment related. Um, even if Disney did reverse their decision and offer him another pirates role, he has said he would not take it. Yeah, for something, even if they offered him three hundred yeah, million, yeah. that's more than the cost of the film. There, Bucko. Yeah. Uh, no, no one's paying that. They might. I don't know for three. <laughs> For 300 million, I think that there's a lot of people who would do a lot of weird crap. Yep. Yep. <laughs> wait, wait. You ever played that game? What would you do for a million dollars? No, but I remember uh, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> there's the whole, the, uh, when I was, uh, this came up when I was in the military. It was this whole, like, this whole narrative of, like, it, you know, what would you do for a million? And then they boiled it down to what would you, all the way. Okay. If you, well, if you do that for a million, then, what would you do for a hundred thousand? And if you do that for a hundred thousand, then what would you do? And so it came down. Oh, no. I won't, I won't say what it came down to, but basically in the, in the depravity of that, uh, that boiled down to what you'd do for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite funny in a not 
public kind of way. <laughs> well, there you go. In a black humor kind of way, dark humor kind of way. Yeah. All right. Well, let's shift gears here back to uh, some good stuff because the new Thor Love and Thunder trailer dropped this week. Uh, isn't it? <sighs> It'll be in theaters July 8th. So remember when I said that Maverick was my most anticipated movie of uh, 20, <laughs> just maybe moved out 2022. Of it, uh, it may be overtaken. Although um, Maverick's going to be on screen before this one. So mm. um, maybe once I've seen Maverick, I can say, yes, it was my most anticipated. And then I can, you know, <laughs> move on, switch it over to this one. <laughs> so I know a lot of channels have already done like really in-depth dives on this. Yep. yep. So I'm, we got a few slides here. We're not going to, dive in on like the uh, deepest of lore but oh i'm sure there's enough to talk about though just in the uh, in the in the most like cursory yeah uh, of senses there's certainly a lot going on oh my it. god this one is so packed with easter eggs and you know what uh, they got me they got me right from the the as soon as the you hear that guitar the, as soon as though. the fade in came in and as soon as i heard the opening notes i'm like that's guns and roses yep i'm like i'm in <laughs> you've, <laughs> you've got me with zeppelin you got me again with guns and roses yep yeah, so we open the trailer. We see Thor running through the uh, forest, and uh, love the comic accurate. Yes. Yeah, love Jack that Kirby uh, reference there. I do like that they. Um, it's teenage Thor. It is. You know, we run through boyhood, teenage, and then you know, grown adult. How much that uh, dovetails nicely into uh, the Loki thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, this, you know, it. It's a throwback right to uh, his first appearance in journey into mystery number 83. Yep. And you know, nice to see that uh, next up, we have Thor telling us, you know, that these hands were once used for battle, but now they're humble tools for peace. I, well, and he I, goes as far as he plants Stormbreaker in the ground, like a tree plants it. Yeah. You know, what's funny is when I watched this uh, sequence, I was reminded of the garden sequence uh, from Endgame. Hmm. Yes, very much. I don't know why, but it just, I'm like, Oh, this kind of hang up his yeah, armor. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Vin Diesel has made mention of an Alpha Groot, which will be appearing at some point. So who knows if Alpha uh, Groot? Who knows another of the species? Maybe, but we don't know if that's you know it will it grow out of Stormbreaker or is Groot just going to continue to evolve? We do see uh, later on that Thor is still wielding Stormbreaker, he so is. presumably it's later on in the trailer. I, I would, would think I would so. Think so. But. Uh, we see, you know, Thor, he's taking his moment. He's getting back in fighting shape and uh, yeah. rocking the chains. Isn't that cool, though, that they're not going to gloss over like, oh, he's fit no. again. Yeah, he's actually got to go through it and do the work. You know, all the uh, and I really do think that uh, one of the criticisms uh, about Endgame was that they kind of glossed over the seriousness of, of the, the mental health issue. Mm hmm. Personally, I don't think they did. I mean, no, as you some, saw him at his lowest as somebody who has suffered uh, from uh, uh, post-traumatic stress. I honestly thought, you know what? That's uh, not far off the mark, to be honest with you. People react in, in a lot of different ways when yeah. they've been exposed to things like that. Uh, but I am glad that they are showing him getting back on the horse yeah. and kind of taking his life back. Yeah. And some people have uh, compared this, that he looks a little like Forrest Gump in the marathon stages, but uh uh, I see the resemblance. I do like the hat though. It is it on that hat is nice. It's a yeah. nice throwback. It's the Avengers logo. Strongest Avenger. Yeah. With some marker <laughs> on there. Strongest Avenger. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the trucker cap, it's got the classic logo, but it's probably not a nod to Forrest Gump. It's probably no. a callback to another film. What, what are you thinking? Uh, well, a lot of people are thinking it's this Vincent. Oh, no way. And adventures in babysitting. Yes back that up one. Oh, that's it's pretty close that's hard to argue yeah and in that one you know i had forgot about him in that film 1987 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, young vincent d'onofrio played a character named dawson who's a worker and sarah believes that he is the mighty thor look how lean he is in that yeah it's almost it's, he's almost unrecognizable yeah like that is not the kingpin no it will be. no no it is not pile no yeah 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 but uh you know a nice nod if it is indeed that one i agree with that yeah that's cool but uh the chains that he's using are hooked up to a giant right and right. some people are speculating that it might be the body of a watcher really because the watchers they're known they can you know shift their size i know there was some discussion about uh some of the other sequences in the uh, in the trailer that maybe this is an uh, another allusion to 
that this is uh, Gore's work. It could be, yeah. That this is another another god, uh, potentially or... a god that he's already. Uh, yeah, because he does go on a bender and like just slaughters a ton of them. Yeah, even yeah, in the yeah. comics, he says, "You know, I've slaughtered thousands of gods." Right, right. So, I wonder if he's going to use that uh, "Where is he?" voice. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Hopefully, he's got a whole new vocalization and a new, a new, uh, a new. Take on yeah, yeah. I, I hope. Don't so. want, I'm Batman. I do not want a repeat on that. No. <laughs> but uh, when Thor he finally gets back into shape and he reveals himself, you know, we get Peter Quill rolling his eyes and his head. Yeah, I mean, I love this moment. I don't know what the hell's going on here. He throws off that long coat or whatever it is that he's wearing, and and uh, he, he's there to be the savior. Yeah, I but mean, the costume is really reminiscent of Thunderstrike. Did the? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Does this? Does this planet remind you of uh, Sakar? A little bit, but all it, the the blue people. It, it kind of reminds me more that it might be the home planet of Yondu. I did hear something about that. Now, what are the, I can't remember what his people are called. I but. do not recall, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, there he is that uh, world tree t-shirt. I yep. do like that. It's a good look for him. It is a good look for him. I'm surprised. I do like the boots though. <laughs> uh, I like the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, next up, we go to uh, Mount Olympus and there is a streak going across here. And I want to know what that streak is. Right so, now, that so we've been talking about this for days, and I keep thinking, what? What are you talking about? What are you yeah. talking? Okay, I but see it. Some people think, you know, maybe this is attack from Gore coming in, or possibly, you know, the arrival of Thor and company to the place. Well, I mean, take a look at that now. Now, now that you mention that, there is a scene later on in the trailer where it looks like Stormbreaker is, is generating the Bifrost. Does that not look like that same kind of rainbow hue? A little bit. Maybe it is. Maybe it's the uh, the the goat wagon maybe the goat goat boat goat wagon goat boat <laughs> thor's party boat the two but the two goats on the boat in the boat yeah. yeah maybe it's that i don't know but you know it could be something else because we've seen silver streaks before. well yes and then so this is where you're kind of clamoring for yeah what if it is the silver surfer i that would be an interesting uh because we're going all cosmic on this one so uh we're going more cosmic we are going more cosmic. yeah yeah I, i'd be okay with it you know it's, it's similar to the visual we got in fantastic four rise of the silver surfle yeah, silver surfer a sil- silver surfle not surfer silver surfle surfle the uh, sil the 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 surfer silver maybe <laughs> okay we know what you're talking about <laughs> the that silver guy, guy. you know that the guy. silver guy yeah the guy from the cover of the satriani album yeah okay but uh we also go in and we get uh, a display of lightning bolts flying around the screen and we know that uh yeah russell crow is going to be playing Crowe. zeus so there is a huge chance we're going to get hercules we're one literally one step away from uh, hercules and yeah. so here we go now is this going to be cuz let's let's presume for a second that it it is thor arriving on the steps of olympus to warn or Say, whatever hey guess what's coming do we get the the Thor Hercules relationship played up as rivals or f- childhood friends? Based on the friendly rivalry I see with Star Lord, yep, I would think it would just since we're introducing him, they yep. can start it off as you know a friendly rivalry. Interesting. So not kinda, not a pre existing like. Remember when we did this thing? Yeah, I think they can just for the MCU. They don't yep. have to dive in that hard on the lore. Okay. Because like literally, this will be the first time they've touched on Zeus and the rest of the gods of Olympus. I keep thinking that with the uh, the absence of of uh, Odin, that at some point we're going to get some version of the Odin son. Maybe. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, at some point, this is him becoming the Odin son. Maybe at some point, Thor is going to you know uh, fill the role of his father. Yeah. Well, yeah. which he's left in the hands of Valkyrie at the moment. But. Well, I mean. Sure, she's the de facto ipso de facto ruler king of Asgard in his in his absence. But I mean, she's not the Odin son. No, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But uh, looks like there's going to be some swashbuckling elements at play here too. Yep. Uh, because we see he's on a boat, and it looks like maybe he might have just defeated a kraken. <laughs> maybe, yeah. But uh, this could be a possible nod to Taika Waititi's "Our Flag Means Death." Uh, which I have watched the entirety of, and it is awesome. Is it? I have it's, not watched yeah, it yet. It's really, really good. Excellent. But uh, the other question is, you know, just who is this blue-haired mystery pirate? I, got a, I, so I don't really think she's anybody, to be honest. I think, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is just one of many 
like whether it's a montage of like him trying like you know when you're trying to reinvent yourself right like i'm gonna do this for three months and then i'm gonna do so like he was a ravager for a while now he's a pirate maybe he'll do some maybe he'll like run a cafe or it's like just a bunch of like stupid unrelated things so he's just just like breaking hearts along the way yeah yeah like this just could be like a crazy montage thing or maybe it's even a you know him fantasizing about doing something but i don't think that this is a major major thing not really but i hope it's a fun thing because it looks like it's a fun thing the whole movie looks like it's gonna be fun well i mean if ragnarok is not with the exception of of, you know killing all the gods arguably the guardians movies are probably the 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 most fun yeah value but if ragnarok is not number three then i don't know what it is yeah. and i mean with with taika waititi back for this one yeah i feel like this is right in that same vein yeah but uh, next we're gonna find like you said uh, thor in yet another look and he's flying across the universe with a bit of a smile on there his it face. is and there's that uh that bifrost energy and yeah. we don't get it we don't get much more than that other than he's it's there it's projecting you don't see if he's in the boat we don't really know no but the one giveaway here and this is why i think this scene is going to be like pretty close to the end of the movie he's wearing that new mighty thor suit now is this comic inspired as well uh, i don't know for sure if it's comic inspired but this is what is revealed in that toy line uh it is with the golden helmet yeah 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 and technically there was an era where he was sporting a golden helmet and is this going to be a new new Asgard? Maybe. I don't know. Find an uninhabited world that uh, could be. Who knows? Find a new place for the people since uh, another scene in this trailer tells us that new Asgard might be taking a beating. Do you think that's new Asgard? I, I know. Pretty sure it's new Asgard. Really? Yes. Oh, I never put that together. But uh, I just thought it was some random city on Earth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's definitely on Earth. Uh, next up, we are treated to a scene that is ripped straight out of the pages of the 2012 Jason Aaron run on Thor, God of Thunder. Right. And and here's that whole, um, you know, Gore's already laying waste to God right, across right, right. the universe. And there's our, you know, shot of Thor with his fur, uh, yeah. fur lined suit. And so there's Korg yeah, with also him. with his uh, fur. Does a guy made of rock need to wear fur? <laughs> no, but it makes him more cuddly. <laughs> Uh, I kind of wonder, you know, he's made of rock. So that make him an even, you know, 22 degrees, you know, no matter what time of year it is. Yeah. (laughs) No matter what season it is. Yeah. But uh, here we find that Thor's friend Falagar, the behemoth has been slain by Gore. And we don't know if, you know, he was on his way to consult with him or to warn him. Right. But either way, he's too late. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, We also get a look at the current lineup of the guardians. And we see that, uh, yes. you know, Gamora uh, is not there. No, so. no Gamora. And as you say, Groot's ducking there. So he is. He's getting bigger. Smaller. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Nebula's still with him. She's still running with the crew. Yep. Uh, and Mantis is sporting some new head jewelry. Oh, so she is. But yeah. is that something to enhance her powers or? Or is it just cosmetic? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We won't know till we actually see it, but who knows? Uh, next up here, we get to. Uh, I guess what is the big reveal of the trailer and it comes after the love and thunder title card. Oh boy. As we see a uh, reform Molnir fly into screen. Yeah. And caught by our new lady Thor, Jane Foster. So you're saying that this is new Asgard. It quite possibly could be. What is there any sort of like, did you read something or uh, not offhand, but uh, if everybody there is fighting the Asgardians. Ah, uh, gotcha. People. Gotcha. Yeah. Now the question is, what are they fighting? Well, that's uh, that's another thing that's come up. Uh, is it Gore's forces or? So I don't know enough about something else. I just don't know enough about the character to know. Like, it, does he have like a, a contingent of like like Thanos had the um, had uh, the Shatar uh, the Chatari? Yeah, and um, uh, those weird six legged dog alien things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, this could be something else, and this is what people are speculating. Could it be symbiotes? Oh, dear Lord. (laughs) And there is a connection here because we know that one was left behind at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, Yes. And we know that Gore is the second one to wield the all black. But, you know, what exactly is the all black? Uh, It was the first technical symbiote. Oh, it was forged as a blade. Yeah. And it's the first of the race of the symbiotes that will eventually become 
known as Venom okay. to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. And it was created by the god of the symbiotes, Null. Oh, so there's your connection. So are we seeing a symbiote invasion of new Asgard? Only time will tell. Man, they already laid the... Uh, with the with the foundation for uh, secret invasion already laid, is that too? I hate to say it. Is that like too Marvel for Marvel at the moment? Maybe considering the whole symbiote connection, yeah, and how much Sony would have to be involved, yeah, it's possible. It's too much. I mean, as long as they continue to play nice, I am more than happy for them to to share properties. Yeah, but, uh, man. Uh, Okay, I guess I need to figure. I need to do some more research on who this null guy is. Then, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> if this is a possibility, <laughs> king of the symbiotes, but uh, king no more thanks to that King in Black series. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I got. That's good. I mean, uh, wow, we uh, we touched on an awful lot. Uh, we covered a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we lots going on, and we could have probably pulled six or seven or ten oh. more. There's so many things going on right now. Um, I have been uh, purposefully avoiding uh all the star wars news because we are so close to obi-wan it's getting close um i'm still working uh i, I don't know if i've mentioned this on our show i've talked about it. i'm working on a secret project yeah um which kind of is kind of why uh, andy has been sort of the 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 showrunner for the last few weeks because i've been busy keeping my head down that will continue to be uh, uh for the foreseeable future until i get that done it's um, going to be good, which will be uh, will be happening in the background because we're still pressing on with our uh, coverage of uh, Obi Wan in uh, in the high ground. So look forward to, to that coming up here pretty soon. Um, and then, of course, we like to just sort of pick and choose, kind of based on how we're feeling each week. And you never know what you're going to get here at Fandom Power. But yep. uh, the one thing I can say for sure is that uh, we will be here same time uh, next week whether that's a, a live show or whether that's pre-recorded, you can catch us uh, Sunday nights, uh, Eastern time, 6 PM right here on uh, our YouTube channel. That's uh, Sawcast productions or on Facebook at uh, the fandom power Facebook page. Or if you're not already a part, check out the uh, fandom power podcast uh, group also on Facebook, where that's a place where you guys can hang out and talk about all the nerd stuff you want to talk about. And quite often we'll be in there kind of hunting around and uh, adding to the conversation. And for sure, you guys want to see us cover uh, some of your favorite entertainment properties or what's let going us on? know. Yeah. I mean, we're always down to, uh, Hey, we just did a video. Uh, if you didn't catch our, our show on, uh, on,